Hey guys, so I got my new camera a few weeks ago and I told you that I would be going into more detail on why I chose to go with the Sony a6400 instead of the ZV-E10, even though that's the budget camera that I've been recommending any, everyone to get as the creator camera. There are a couple of clear reasons why I made the decision that I did. So just to see what we're dealing with, let me go through the similarities between the cameras and how they differ. Let's talk. So both the a6400 and the ZV-E10 are equipped with the exact same sensor, which is basically the same sensor in almost every modern Sony APS-C camera. And that is the 24.2 megapixel XMAR CMOS sensor. They both have the same Bionz X imaging processor and their standard ISO range is the same, going from 100 to 32,000. With the extended range being a little different, the ZV-E10 has an increased maximum ISO of 51,200 and the A6400 has an extended maximum range of 102,400. They both have the same maximum shutter speed of 1 over 4,000 and their maximum burst rate is the same at 11 frames per second. They also share the same fantastic hybrid autofocus system with 425 focus points. In terms of video, they can both do 4K at 24, 25, or 30 frames per second, which is oversampled from 6K without any sort of crop or binning. In Full HD, they can both go up to 100 frames per second. Quality-wise, they support 420 8-bit internal recording, and they can both shoot in S-Log2, S-Log3, and HLG picture profiles. That being said, the ZV-E10 is the newer body out of the two, and it features the latest color science from Sony. So by that, you can see that there are a lot of similarities between the two cameras, but there are some pretty big differences as well. First of all, physically, the ZV-E10 is a bit smaller. So with a completely different button layout, but in a smaller body, it does come in at 60 grams lighter than its older brother. On the ZV-E10, you have a on off switch at the top the ring around the shutter is actually a zoom in and out toggle, which is used for power zoom lenses. It has a custom button, a big recording button, an exposure wheel, and a button to change your shooting modes between photo, video, and s &Q. The A6400 is more of your standard A-series body from Sony. So it has a on off switch around the shutter, it has a custom button, it has a dial for your different shooting modes, and it has your exposure dial. The recording button is actually in the right back corner, which is, whoever thought this was a good idea? No, don't do this. Luckily, hopefully, it won't be there for the future cameras. The back of the body is pretty much identical between the cameras. If you don't count the autofocus, manual focus, AEL switch in the middle of that on the A6400 or the button to bring out the built-in flash, which the ZV-E10 doesn't have at all. Another thing the A6400 has on the back that the ZV-E10 doesn't is an electronic viewfinder. Now, all of that stuff, it causes the body to be slightly bigger, which leads to the higher weight. But another thing that is actually a little bit different in terms of the body is the fact that the A6400's grip is a bit deeper, which is actually a lot more comfortable to hold. The back of both cameras also, of course, has the display. Now on the ZV-E10, it is a full, fully articulating flippy screen. On the A6400, it is a tilt screen. It does go all the way up, but the way that that's been done means that if you have anything in the hot shoe, well, it's going to be blocking the screen. So you need a, an additional thing to turn it to the side or something like that. The accessory, I mean, not the screen. Another thing the A6400 has over the ZV-E10 though is the fact that it's weather sealed. So if you're outside shooting and it starts to get, you, you can notice a slight drizzle, you don't have to have a heart attack. You can keep on going or just, you know, you have more time to put it away. So that is the physical difference. Now let's talk about the features. Now one big thing the ZV-E10 has over the A6400 is the fact that it has stabilization. 
No in-body stabilization, but it does have electronic. So it will crop in, but you can get more stable footage that way. But the bigger ace in the ZVE 10 sleeve is the fact that it tracks your gyroscopic data, which means you can use Sony's free software Catalyst Browse to get extremely stable footage. On the A6400, on the other hand, there is nothing, no stabilization whatsoever. The ZVE 10 also has some features that are specifically made for creators, I would say. So by default, the top button, the custom button, is meant as a background defocus button, which basically means when you press it, it opens up the lens's aperture as wide as it can. Of course, you can just manually do this, but if you're not that comfortable with a camera, this can help. The camera also has a product showcase mode, which is actually quite handy. Meaning that whenever you bring a thing in front of the lens, in front of you, the camera will focus on the thing, usually a product. If I was to show you a phone, it would focus on the phone. And when I took it away, it would instantly focus back to me. That can be, that would be really handy, but you know, it's autofocus. It can also automatically record the correct metadata so that when you're recording vertically and you put your file into whatever editing software you use, that video is automatically vertical. So it's not, you don't have to correct it in post from a horizontal video to a vertical video. So that's handy, maybe a little bit faster for your TikToks and your YouTube shorts and whatnot. You also won't be left guessing whether or not you're actually recording video because when you do that, a tally light does come on on the front of the camera as well as the whole edge of the screen becomes completely red. So no way you can miss that. There's also a soft skin effect, but no, just no. Oh, also the ZV-10 keeps its eye autofocus in 4K recording. Whereas the A6400, when you prop it up to 4K, it actually loses eye autofocus and just uses face autofocus. Then again, this hasn't been an issue, at least for me, but in more changing angle footage, it probably can work slightly better. So with all of that said, why did I then choose the Sony A6400 instead of the ZV-E10? And in which situation should you probably do the same? Well, let's look at my camera strong suits. Better ergonomics, weather sealing, and an electronic viewfinder. All of those three features are extremely useful for photographers. And seeing as I also run a photography business, I kind of need those features. Now, I would have loved the gyro data from the ZV-E10 for that extreme stabilization, but seeing as I don't really do vlogging, the situations where I need that stabilization are pretty few and far between. And the features that are in the 6400 are just things that I can't sacrifice. I just don't feel comfortable having a camera without a viewfinder. But those features that I find important for my photography are not that important for video shooters. So if your use case is mostly video, then there is pretty much no situations where I would recommend the A6400. I'm just saying that if you're doing both, the 6400 can't keep up with the ZV-E10 unless it's vlogging you're doing, then it's pretty much any, any situations would lead you toward the ZV-E10. Of course, in terms of photography, you can use the ZV-E10. It takes great photos, just shooting with it is not as comfortable as with the a6400 so for me as someone who shoots a lot it's pretty much 50 50 for my use case the photography features are really really important so that's why i went with what i did but my recommendation still hasn't changed at all if you're using it for mainly video go with the zve 10. if you do do a lot of photography then i do recommend seriously thinking between these two. Look at the features and see which will serve you best. And speaking of serving someone best, it would serve me best if 
you like the video if you like the video. And consider subscribing to the channel for more videos like this. So which camera did you end up going with and have you liked it? Let me know in the comments below. And if you want to see more of my stuff, you can check out the video right next to me. I don't know which side it is on, but maybe this one? I don't know. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your week. And I will see you guys next time. Okay? Bye-bye.